So in this, this unit, we, we take it in chunks. So we take one or two, sometimes three body systems at a time, and we talk about them. For each one, we kind of follow the same pattern. We talk about what the function of that body system is, what it, what it does, what some of the organs are of that body system, and we talk about some of the possible diseases or problems or disorders that might affect that body system. Okay? So we, we cover most of them. Now, the one that we don't really spend any time on is this top one, the integumentary system. It is your body's basically outer cover. It includes hair, nails, skin, and that is an important body system, even though we don't spend a lot of time on it. It does a lot of different things. Okay, it keeps us sort of watertight so we don't dry out. It prevents pathogens like bacteria from getting into our body. It helps us regulate our temperature by um, allowing heat to escape. Um, it allows us to sense things through touch and temp temperature sensors and so forth. So it does a bunch of things. But we are going to start today with the other body system. We're going to start by talking about skeletal system and muscular system. We keep those together. We have a lab we'll do on those systems midweek this week. And then we'll probably have a quiz Friday on the skeletal and muscular system. Then we'll move on and we'll probably do nervous and endocrine together, circulatory alone and so forth. So we'll break it into chunks and we'll have a quiz you know, every week or week and a half um, about a couple systems. So if you remember, we talked about the organization of living things. We said all life is made of cells, but then cells work together to form tissues. Tissues work together to form organs. Organs work together to form organ systems. And that's what we're talking about. These are organ systems within the human body. And they all have different roles, but they all work together to help maintain homeostasis. And we've talked about that word before. What does it mean, homeostasis? Nick? Yeah? yeah, that's an example. It's, it's keeping a, a constant or a proper internal conditions, okay? Maintaining the environment we need inside of our body. We, we have a narrow range of conditions that we can survive. We need certain amounts of oxygen and energy and temperature and so forth. And so these body systems work that allow us to, to keep that keep that condition at the proper level. So we'll start today by talking about the skeletal system. So as you guys told me in our question today, the function of the skeletal system, it helps protect our body, our organs. It also gives our body support and structure allows us to move. So I know this is something you learned. How many bones in an adult? Raise your hand, raise your hand. How many bones in an adult human body? All right. 206. 206. Why do I have to say in a human adult body? Abby? Because babies have more bones than Yeah, babies have more bones. But what happens to them? They not so much dissolve, they sort of fuse together. And so multiple bones sort of become one over time as the baby matures. So the skeletal system consists of our bones and also some other parts that are related. And bone is actually um, a type of tissue. So bone is alive. I think sometimes people kind of feel like it's just not alive, but it has blood vessels in it, nerve endings. It's a live bone. It grows. It's hard. Out. It's a hard tissue. It's made of a calcium compounds. And what's inside of our bones? Our long bones, like our femur, humerus, and so forth. Matt. Yeah. I forgot the name, but it's like marrow. Marrow. Yep. It's bone marrow. And that marrow has an important job to do. It's related actually to a separate body system. What does it do? Kendall? It pushes on blood, the 
Yeah. And it, comes it, it produces our blood cells. Yeah. We'll talk a lot about blood cells mm -hmm. later on in this section, but we have different types of blood cells, white blood cells and red blood cells. And our bone marrow is what produces those blood cells. It's in the middle of the bones, okay, especially the long bones. But there's also some other things we're going to talk about sort of in, together with the muscular system, ligaments, tendons, cartilage. We call these things connective tissue because they help connect different parts of the skeletal and muscular system together. Okay. So one of those types of connective tissue are ligaments. Do you guys remember or know from health class? What do ligaments connect? Me? Is it bones and skin? No. Abby? Um, they're um, muscles and bones. No. Oh, okay. Kind of? It's like bone meat. Yeah, it connects bones to bones. So like this skeleton, obviously it's fake. But each of these bones are kind of a separate unit. What would prevent it from all just falling apart? Ligaments. Ligaments hold these bones together in the right position. Where do bones have to, where do bones meet? What do we call those parts? Joints. Where two bones meet is called a joint, and that joint is held together by ligaments. And so, if this were a real skeleton, all the parts would be held together by ligaments linking each of those bones together. <coughs> Tendons. <coughs> connect muscles to bones. So our muscle's job is to pull on bones, allowing us to move. And it's tendons which connect those muscles to the bones. So here we have a tendon that connects this person's calf muscle to a bone in their heel. What's the name of that tendon? The Achilles tendon, correct. What would we call this strand of tissue? Or this one in here? Tissue. No? Tissue. That's a ligament. It's connecting okay, the femur to the fibula. That's disgusting. So the tendons are what pulls on the bones to actually move them. Muscle pulls on the tendon, tendon pulls on the bone. And then the third type of connective tissue is at the ends of the bone around the outside, and it's called cartilage. It's in other places as well. This cartilage covers around the outside of the bones, and it helps cushion them. Okay. And it helps them slide easily over each other when the joints move. We're gonna talk more about ligaments like, and the cartilage a little later on. We'll talk about different things that can happen to those. that we're going to use. Obviously, other diagrams and pictures or what you learn in health, you might label more bones than are listed here or less. It depends how detailed you want to be. This is about all the detail we require of you. And so the bones in the skeleton, they have some have like a common name that we might call them, like your kneecap or your collarbone or your skull. But there are also sort of scientific uh, anatomical names for those for those bones. We're going to use the actual names of them. So starting at the top, you might call it the skull. Raise your hand and tell me what's the name for that. Yeah? Called cranium. That's the cranium. What does the cranium do? What's its purpose? Protects your brain. Our vital organs like our brain, our heart, our lungs are protected by thick bone um, to prevent any damage. And that's what the cranium is. It helps protect the brain that's in the middle. What about this bone? Where is it? Collarbone, but what's the name for that? Clavicle. So this is you know, one that often people fracture. My daughter broke her collarbone two years ago. Sister pushed her down when we were playing soccer and she landed and 
her to pop, and so she had to kind of stabilize. But it's commonly, you know, people fall a lot of times. People snowboarding, seeing sometimes break a collarbone, like if you fall forward very hard and you like land on like your arms, your elbows, like the force of that can sometimes fracture your collarbone. Okay. Um, number three, this bone here, might call your breastbone. It's this thick, very thick bone right in the center of your chest. What's that called? Sternum. Okay. The sternum, again, is another protective bone. It makes sort of the center of your rib cage. And what's in there that is protecting? Yeah, and here's your heart and lungs, vital organs to your survival. So your sternum helps to protect those important organs. In the arms, we have the upper arm bone. Okay, it's just so in our arms and our legs, there's one large bone on top, and then the next part has two smaller bones connected. And the arms, what's the upper arm bone? Humerus. Humerus. Good. What are the other two bones called? in your forearm. Ulna, Ulna and radius, yes. This is labeling these bones, the bones that make up your spine. What do we call them? Vertebrae. Vertebrae. And we have 33 vertebrae in our spines. There are a bunch of smaller bones stacked one on top of each other with a little disc of cartilage in between and these sort of bumps in the back. When you feel in your spine like this, you can feel those bumps on every bone. What you're feeling is this bone. And then below, you feel another one and another one. Those are, that's what you're feeling in your spine there. So the ulna and radius, often people mix up. So you have two bones there in your forearm. The ulna is the one we say is on the pinky side of your arm. So if you have your arm out, the ulna is the one on the pinky side. The radius, the thicker one, is the one on the thumb side. I, I tell people to remember like your thumb is like a finger you could rotate in like a whole circle more than other fingers, and a circle has a radius. So the thumb side one is your radius. And if you like hold on to your forearm and twist your wrist, you can feel those two bones. They kind of, as you twist your wrist, one, the radius sort of rotates around the ulna. Yeah, can you, what's that? Like muscle, muscle tissue and nerves and blood vessels are in between those two, yeah. So yeah, you can, you can feel it there. We're gonna look at chicken wings, actually, and we'll look at different bones. No. Are they raw? Yeah. Let's cook them. Yeah. All right. Um, the, the um, hip bones, you might call them. This is the pelvis. So the way all the bones and the, the vertebrae connect allows us to stand straight up. Oh, up here? Yeah, that one you could label. It's not on our list, but it's this bone back here. So these, these uh, triangular bones, you know, if you reach behind you and try to grab onto, you can feel it, come, it sort of sticks out. That you, you might call it your shoulder blade. Reach behind your back like in a box. That's your scapula. Oh, sorry. I don't think it's, it's labeled. Oh, yeah, it is labeled. Um, yeah, that's the scapula. Okay, connects with your collarbone, sort of forms your shoulder blade. In the legs, we have, again, one bone on the top section, two bones on the bottom. The top bone is the what? Femur. The largest bone in the body. And then the two bones in like the lower part of your leg are the tibia and tibia. they do not rhyme. People always want to call them tibia and fibia. It's tibia and fibula. The tibia is the front one, kind of your shin bone, whereas the fibula is the, the thinner bone, okay, more towards the back. Yep. 
And then this skeleton doesn't have any. You do. Your kneecap, patella. And those are the bones of the body that you're going to need to know for this section. Any question about any of the bones? All right. So let's finish up by talking just about joints, and then we'll be done. So you already told me where two bones meet, that's called a joint, and it's often an area in which movement is required. A place where two bones connect, and they're, again, stabilized by ligaments. And there's four types of movable joints where the bones can move. They're called hinge joint, bone socket, gliding, and pivot. What is a hinge? Where in this room would I find a hinge? This metal piece on the door is a hinge. And why do doors have hinges? So they can move. So I can pull on the door. The hinge allows for this door to move. Now, a hinge joint, like a hinge in a door, allows only one plane of movement. This door only swings in and out. I can't tilt it forward. I can't lift it up. This hinge joint keeps it only moving in one plane of direction. In our body, hinge joints do the same thing. They allow movement in only one plane of direction. So in our bodies, where do we have hinge joints? Where do we have two bones that only move in one plane? Elbow and your knee. Yeah, your elbow and your knee. So your elbow, your forearm and your upper arm, it only moves in one direction. You can only bend up towards your upper arm. Now I know people do this. Well, look, no, it can move this way. Is this my elbow joint moving? No. No, I'm moving my shoulder. So when I, if I were to hold my upper arm straight, this part of my hand can't move side to side, okay, unless you have a serious problem. Only moves up and down. So that's a hinge joint. Same thing with your knee. If you hold your upper thigh straight, your knee only goes forward and backward. It can't move side to side, okay? If you move it side to side, you're moving your hip, actually, which is a different type of joint. So your elbow and your knee are examples. And the reason why they only allow movement in one direction is because of the shape of the bones. The bones all kind of fit together with a bump and a groove so that it only slides one way. James? Yeah, well, fingers have a little bit more range of motion, like you can move your finger a little bit back and forth. They're a different type of joint, okay? And they're made of multiple types of joints all linked together. A ball and socket joint is just like it sounds. It can move in a complete circle because one part of the bone forms a ball. Like if I take out this skeleton's um, leg, the top of the femur, has this round part, this ball at the end, and it fits into this part here that looks like a cup, okay? And that allows for a much wider range of movement, almost 360 degrees. And your hip joint, okay, and your shoulder joint, those are ball and socket joints. You have a lot of range of motion with your shoulder and with your hip. Um, yeah, the ankle is a complex joint made of several types of joints together. So that's a ball and socket joint. Another type of joint are the gliding joints. Gliding joints are where bones sit one on top of the other and can kind of um, move over the top of each other. And probably the most easy to understand example of that are the vertebrae. So your vertebrae, those 33 backbones, they each sort of sit one on top of the other and they're cushioned in between them with a, a disc of cartilage, but they allow one bone to slide on top of the other. So even though each of those bones is sort of, each of those bones is just a single bone, if you each one twist a little bit and that allows you to twist side to side, or each one sort of can bend on top of each other so you can sort of shift side to side and those bones all kind of move one at a time. That's an example of a gliding joint. And then we have pivot joints. Pivot joints are joints that allow for rotation, okay? like your neck, for example. 
okay? Or you can rotate your head side to side. That's called a pivot. But there's also a type of joint which does not allow movement. Where would you find these types of joints where there's no movement between bones? It's not joint involuntary. Where? Oh, no? Right here, isn't it? Multiple bones. Yeah, it's ours on your sternum and also in the cranium. Your skull is made of several bones that meet, and those are fixed joints where those bones meet. Okay? There's no movement there. The bones in your cranium don't move independent of each other, they kind of fuse together. That's called an immovable joint. And in Babies, what do you know about the cranium of a baby? It's not fused. It's not fully fused. There's an area, it's called a fontanelle, or people call it a soft spot in the baby's head. Have you ever seen this in like a cousin or brother or yeah. sister? And it's a little area where these plates in the cranium have not fused together yet, and it's soft. And you could see like in a baby, if you look closely, especially if they don't have any hair, it moves up and down with their heartbeat. Okay, and it's a little suction there. The bones haven't fully come together. Eventually, it does fuse together, but it's actually important that it doesn't until their brain grows to the proper point. In some babies, they have a problem, and those bones fuse too early, and then their brain can't grow properly, and pressure builds up in their, in their cranium, and so they might have to do surgery to relieve some of that pressure. So it's important that, that those bones aren't fused until the right time in the baby's development. All right, any questions about the bones or joints? We'll move on tomorrow and talk about some problems with the skeletal system, and then we'll talk about muscles as well. Or gliding joints, would uh, example be vertebrae? Yes. Oh, no, not vertebrae. Oh, gliding, yes. Gliding.